is coming. Oh, stop, stop, stop. Just wedge it out. There we go. Yeah, that is not how we want to do that. All right, on this episode, I'm going to be tearing into a uh, Model 3 pack with the express purpose of harvesting the cells. Uh, previous video, uh, viewers know I don't recommend doing this because it's usually not worth it, but uh, uh, about a, a few months ago, a friend contacted me and said uh, he runs an engineering company and they needed the cells for a very specific application and asked if I would come over and uh, uh, make sure they don't uh, burn their uh, entire office building down. Uh, or get electrocuted. So since of course love doing this stuff, I instantly said yes. And you know, I've torn about port the the bolt cells, Gen 1, Gen 2. Uh, leaf cells are easy to deal with. Um, so in the last video, uh, I took apart the LG Chem cells from the uh, modules from the Chrysler Pacifica. Uh, and none of them are easy to do, but the, uh, the new Model 3 pack really takes the cake. It even makes the uh, uh, Model S pack look like uh, 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 look pretty easy to take apart in comparison. Uh, the biggest thing with it is that uh, the cells are glued in three different ways. Uh, there is a, uh, a dark gray adhesive that uh, holds it all together. There's a thermally conductive uh, white adhesive, and then the whole thing is uh, potted together with a uh, what looks like an expanding syntactic, some sort of green uh, foaming adhesive. Uh, that uh, all those things together make it a, a real fun, uh, fun job to tear into. So this is that cooling fin. Each one's connected. And then this is a rigid gray adhesive. And then this is the lovely whatever potting compound, foam potting compound they use. I wonder if it's a, a syntactic self-expanding. Might be. Because otherwise, I don't know how you'd get it to fill all those cracks. It's got to be. And then inside there is a white paste adhesive. It's probably a thermally conductive adhesive. And it is a mess to take apart. So we tried a bunch of different ways uh, trying to get these cells out um, without damaging them. That's actually why I have a handful. Is it took a few iterations to figure out how not to uh, dent the cell. Uh, because, you know, it doesn't take, the amount of force it takes to get this adhesive to break off is pretty extensive, uh, and the amount of force it takes to damage these cells is not a lot. So, uh, I tried a few different iterations. We joked around with some, uh, ideas of, like, is there a way to dissolve the adhesive? I mean, we're, uh, we got a couple guys who do nothing but glue things together for a living, comp doing composite structures, and, uh, you know, the chances of finding that is probably pretty, uh, pretty small. But best we actually came up with is, I was thinking, um, so we started with wood originally, a doorstop, and whatever else we had around. I was thinking, you know what, that's about the size of uh, some plastic tubing. Uh, we tried PVC pipe. Uh, that was uh, too rigid. It would still, it would work really well, but it would still damage the cell. Uh, in the end, uh, PEX tubing, uh, I think it was a three quarter or one inch. I think one inch was the, uh, the size that we ended up on. Uh, but that allowed us to uh, be able to hammer and break that uh, uh, break that adhesive loose. Um, actually, we just um, uh, this is split in half, and you can act as a wedge. But the nice thing about the packs, which is a um, extruded cross-linked uh, polyethylene, uh, is that it's it's tough, but it's not too rigid. So it would yield and uh, tear up rather than damaging the cells. We didn't damage any cells when we use the, the PECs, so it's kind of uh, 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 good safety protection. The, the, these do get torn up uh, after uh, a couple dozen uses uh, or less, so you'd have to go back to the um, disc sander and sharpen them up uh, to get them out. So, And that was the, uh, the links that we had to go to uh, to get these cells out. And uh, yeah, I mean, again, you can do it. Uh, you know, I always talk about like, most of the, uh, that you shouldn't bother with it, you can, but most of the time it's not worth it. And that's, I think, even more so the case with these. The flip side is, you can't buy these 2170 cells as far as I'm aware of the real 2170 cells. Uh, these have a very good energy density, um, and you know, the price per kilowatt that you can get for these is excellent. The, the biggest disadvantage of the Model 3 cells uh, modules is they come in three big modules. Um, two more identical, one's a little bit larger. 
and you can't split that up into a smaller pack, so they're really hard to reuse for a vehicle. Uh, grid storage, you know, backup energy uh, for your house, that kind of stuff, th you know, that works just fine, but if you want to put in a DIY EV, uh, unless you have a big vehicle or you're just throwing in the bed of a truck, uh, go see the videos on silent, um, chances are those aren't, uh, those aren't going to work out for most vehicle installations. So uh, in that case, if you really want this, these cells, um, then really want these at this energy density, you kind of have to resort to this, and it's quite a bit of work. Uh, it's funny, originally, uh, these cells were on, at the time, I haven't looked recently, but $30 a cell on eBay. And so a friend's like, oh, we'll just buy a whole pack, and then, you know, there's a couple bucks a cell, I don't remember the exact price. Uh, and after we started tearing it, he's like, ah, I see why they're charging $30 a cell. <laughs> chance you're going to damage some in the process. Uh, it's a little, really labor intensive. Uh, anyone who hasn't worked around uh, large high voltage battery packs actually extracting cells, it's a bit of a nerve-wracking experience because you, you know you can't turn off a battery, you know. Uh, so you've got to be really careful about using insulated tools, uh, not having any jewelry, watches, that kind of stuff that uh, you can potentially arc across, to, you know, even your screwdriver. Uh, that's why you use a you know plastic wedge. This is also not going to make a make a current current path. But uh, and, and just like on the model uh, the model S uh, packs I've shown before, there's a wire that goes across the cell tap, and these are just put into big bricks. So it's just a matter of going through, getting on a corner, starting chipping them out. The the biggest problem I ran it that made it the biggest pain in the butt was actually not you know having to hammer them out, which is a pretty big. Uh, uh, pain in the butt. The the real one was they they glue it together and there's a plastic uh, I don't know if it's a unfilled nylon or an ABS some some sort of uh, uh, it's not super strong plastic it's brittle uh, so you have this whole sheet that goes across it with a bunch of holes in it and if you you have to pick that off first before you can get the wedge in to get them off and it's uh, it, it's just uh, brittle enough that if you try to pick away, it just comes out in small chunks. You can't just pull the sheet. There's a see. The key thing is you got to get every bit of that ABS. I don't know. What do you think that is? An ABS? Maybe. It's almost like an unfilled, almost like an unfilled peak. Oh yeah, look at that. There's another one. There's a top plastic sheet that you can peel that off really easily, but then underneath that, there's actually an injected molded, uh, injection molded, uh, unreinforced plastic that it just comes off in like you know pieces about that big. So you're sitting there just chipping away, and then once you get enough of that peeled away, then you can uh, use the uh, PEX wedge. The other thing I was doing. That is uh, scoring the plastic, okay. the, sorry, the black or the gray adhesive, obviously making sure not to go too far. So with that being said, I mean, you can do it. Uh, you have to have a really specific application. Uh, I'm sure a lot of people want to know, like, you know, why would you do this? Uh, you know, why did Tesla design the pack this way? You can imagine if you had a whole pack and one cell goes down, there's, there's no feasible way that you're going to replace just one cell in that pack. Um, but the flip side is, this is the cheapest way you can make a good, reliable pack. There is, uh, the, con the connections are, are fairly low. Um, as long as you have a very, very, very good, rigorous quality control in the cells where you're not going to have uh, you know, any, any issues with bad cells ending up in a pack, then it's really not that big of an issue. Um, you know, these are the, the volume that they make these and these are commodity. And, you know, you, the labor it takes, 
even if you did, did design this so that you could take the pack apart and replace individual cells or harvest cells, uh, the labor it takes to do that, even with a des uh, well-designed pack that's designed to be taken apart, honestly, that trade's not going to come out because the cell individual cell cost is actually pretty low. Um, and it's more about making the pack as reliable and easy to manufacture and low cost on the front end. Even someone who's played around with batteries a lot uh, and taken apart a lot, uh, it's still not a, not a fun job, even if it was fairly easy to pull through just because, or pull these out just because of the, uh, let's say, the, the stress involved. It's funny when you're peeling on the plastic, we both commented like, is that sound the sound of the plastic cracking or is that sound of a small arc happening? Because the little uh, cell tap wires that come over, if you knock them over to the next cell, it'll just vaporize. That's that's uh, why they're uh, designed that way, is that wire is sized such that if you do short it, it just uh, melts away and breaks the link. Uh, but uh, it's still a disconcerting problem. So when you're buying the Tesla Model 3 cells on eBay, somebody did this. Or and well, hopefully they did something smarter yeah, than what we're, they're doing something smarter than what we're doing, so yeah. Yeah, but it would have saved you spending the money for this pack. Yes, it would. And uh, that is the main goal of this test is to save people. Nobody else to do this ever again. Yeah, that's the only one. I don't know, I keep thinking, oh, I'm just going to finish, but I'm kind of making really good progress over here. I don't want to stop. So, there it is. I mean, you can harvest these cells out. Uh, as you see, it's a pain in the butt. Um, but if you need a 2170, these are really good energy density. Uh, as far as I know, you can't buy the real things. I'm sure there are knockoffs on eBay. Uh, but if you want the real uh, Tesla cells, um, Tesla's not going to sell them to you on their on their web store. Uh, the only way to do it is to harvest them from the back. So it can be done. It's going to take a lot of hammering and wedges and uh, time and uh, worrying about are you going to arc it over and ca uh, cause a fire. But uh, you know that's the way it is. Uh, a, lot, a lot of people will really jump to you know why would Tesla make something that's so hard to service? Uh, and it's just it's an engineering trade and a cost trade of what's the probability that you're going to have a cell or cells die and uh, what, how much labor is it going to take to fix it and is that going to be economically and uh, uh, make sense. Um, really the thing that makes sense is spend more money to make sure that you never have or almost never have a bad cell or if you do have bad cells they never end up into a pack by via, via inspection or testing etc. And then uh, if you do have one that makes it in there so you get someone gets a warranty call and say I got this fault on this battery or um, that goes out. Of, uh, you have a bad batch that uh, start to go out before the warranty is over. I don't know. They, maybe they dis dis discharge it and uh, throw it into a big grinder, grind them all up, and then you can extract out the aluminum, the copper, the lithium, uh, get all those uh, the, uh, all the metal and uh, out of it, and uh, turn into new batteries that way. So honestly, that's the much more better answer um, as far as like. For me personally, for what reconfiguring these packs, you know, I built, uh, I made my A123 packs uh, for people that have, from following this along from like 10 years ago, uh, those packs, I everything bolted together, so if I had a bad cell, I could unbolt it. Uh, that seemed like the right thing at the time, and then the first time I had a bad cell and had to tear the whole thing apart, and then p replace that one bad cell, it was a huge pain in the butt. And the answer was, you know, make sure you don't have any bad cells beforehand. Um, because it's just a uh, it's a nerve-wracking experience tearing into a battery pack. Cause you can't turn batteries off. There's no like little power switch you can turn off and then make this uh, such that it can't short out. So when you're uh, working around it with uh, screwdrivers and uh, tools, you're always worried about uh, is that that sound I just heard plastic cracking or is this something just arc over? Uh, so with that, I can understand why Tesla didn't make the battery serviceable. Uh, I do stand by that. The Model 3 battery pack is the least uh, serviceable, fixable uh, uh, battery pack that uh, is out there. Uh, but if you want the highest energy density cylindrical cells, that might be your only option. So, oh, I so with that, I do have 
a handful of the bad cells. These are the ones that we, before we got the process down, I've got, uh, I don't know, half a dozen, dozen of them. I'm going to have to figure out a uh, good way to give these a fiery, you know, Viking death. So if anyone has uh, suggestions on what they want to see, I mean, there's the typical, there's actually a standard for the nail penetration test. Um, heat them up till they pop. Um, there's a lot of interesting ways to uh, uh, watch these things fail, so that'll be a, a future video. So if you want to see a, a particularly uh, a sp uh, special death for one of these, or maybe just surprises us and shows us how safe they are, uh, put that down in the comments and uh, maybe I'll try it. Stay tuned. <laughs> Up to 600 volts. Ooh, motor repair. Take one. There's four bolts here. That shaft moves this lever. It's live! Took off the bus, bro.